National Broadcasting Company presents transcribed The Magnificent Montague, starring Monty Woolley. It's been a long, hard winter for Edwin Montague. This was the winter that marked his final surrender to radio. From the magnificent Montague of the Shakespearean stage to Uncle Goodhart of an afternoon radio program. Yes, this was the winter of his discontent. He is resting in his den after dinner. His wife, Lily, is clearing away the dinner dishes. Agnes, their maid, has kindly consented to help her. Would I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Would I? Well, that finishes that set. Agnes, what was that? Nothing, honey. Just broke my dish for the day. Would I love you, love you, love you? Not so much noise. Edwin is resting. May he rest in peace. <laughs> Agnes, I'm worried about him lately. He looks terrible. That's just what I told you. When? Twenty-five years ago, the day you married him. <laughs> I'm serious, Agnes. Don't you think he looks thin? And he's lost his bounce. Oh, I don't know. Let's go in and bounce him a few times. <laughs> oh, Agnes, please. D- did you notice he didn't eat a bite of your cooking? Maybe he's getting sick. Maybe he's getting smart. (laughs) There's that radio job. All his life he's been in the theater. This is the first time he's ever had a steady job. It's a grind, Agnes. Believe me, it's no fun for Edwin to be on the air five times a week. For his listeners, it ain't either. (laughs) Agnes, I have it. I know what to do with Edwin. Go ahead, honey. No matter what you do, the police won't get a word out of me. Oh, don't be silly. This summer, I'm going to get him out of New York. Get Montague out of New York? You've got a better chance of moving the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> well, we've never spent a summer in the country. He'll love it. I can see Montague with the cows and chickens. Some place where he can just sprawl out and relax. Are you kidding? If he ever lays down with that beard, he'll wake up with an egg in it. <laughs> Oh, don't be silly. When he was a boy, he used to love the country. When he was a boy, there were no cities. <laughs> Agnes, you're always intimating that Edwin is old. Intimating? I've seen that picture of him in the army marching under the Washington Monument. <laughs> Lots of soldiers have marched under the Washington Monument. Right behind Washington? <laughs> Oh, stop exaggerating. All right, all right. But a boy, he ain't. Agnes, I'm determined to get him out of New York this summer. Now, we'll wait a little... Oh, I'll get the phone, Agnes. Hello? Oh, Mr. Harrison. No, we're staying home tonight. Canasta, wonderful. Come over as soon as you can. Who was that as if I didn't know the Harrisons across the hall were coming over for Canasta? Sam and Martha Harrison are the first neighbors we've ever had in New York who are neighborly. A little card game will be nice and relaxing for Edwin. Oh, sure. Lily? Here he comes, Mr. Coffee Nerve. <laughs> ah, Edwin, did you get a nice rest in your den? Who can rest in that debris? Agnes, just once would you break tradition and clean it? Now, Edwin, don't start with Agnes. Lily, I don't mind a little dust. Well, I find mushrooms growing under the clout. <laughs> Stop exaggerating. The mice got those mushrooms two weeks ago. <laughs> All right, Agnes. Now, Edwin, please don't get upset. You're, you're so jumpy and nervous lately. Nonsense. You want to see how steady I can hold my hands around Agnes's throat? <laughs> now, look at yourself. You're pale, circles under your eyes. You're getting a pot belly. Pot belly? How ridiculous. There's one thing I can say. I carry myself very well. And what you can't carry, you drag. <laughs> Please, both of you act your age. Edwin, you're getting worse every day. Lily, I'm just a little tired. And staying in the city this summer, as you always do, won't help. What are you driving at? Edwin, this summer we're going to take a house in the country. Oh, no. Now, Edwin. A house in the country. Oh, goody. 
Our own little garden where we could plant Agnes. <laughs> well, that's out. I hate the country. Well, just this summer, let's get out of New York with its heat and all that soot and dirt blowing around. So you want to go to the country where it all comes from? <laughs> nice, quiet place where you can rest. I certainly do, and I'm going right to bed. Good night. Oh, wait, 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 Edwin. The Harrisons are coming over for Canasta. Oh, no, not again. Now, Edwin. If you're looking for a nice, quiet place, let's rent their apartment. They're always here. <laughs> well, a little Canasta game with Sam Harrison and his wife, Martha, will relax your mind. It'll unhinge it. I hate Canasta, and I hate the Harrisons. I hate the idea of wasting an evening. Oh, that's Sam and Martha. I'll get the door. Ah, the Harrisons. Come in. How do you do, Mrs. Montague? I was just saying to Martha, we haven't been over to the Montague since last night. They think we moved back to St. Louis. <laughs> Isn't that just what I said, Martha? Yes. <laughs> Harrison, you mean there's an outside chance, uh, I mean, you are thinking of moving back to St. Louis? Not on your life. We're New Yorkers now. East side, west side, all around. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, sir, you can bet your bottom dollar St. Louis will never see us again. Tell me, Mr. Montague, have you ever been in St. Louis? No, but right now it seems like the place to be. <laughs> Edmund, uh, I'll get the card table. Watch how you put up that card table, Mrs. Montague. About one year ago, I was putting one up. A leg collapsed, got my hand caught in it, tripped, fell down, broke my jaw so badly I couldn't open my mouth for a month. Remember that, Martha? Yeah. <laughs> Let's start playing. Edwin has to get to bed early. You deal, Edwin. Canasta again. Uh, uh, wait, how about a few hands of bridge? Bridge? Well, that's right, Edwin. We used to play bridge in the dressing room when we were in the theater. <laughs> yes, I used to love bridge. It's a faster game, more exciting. I'll deal. Okay with me. I win at all games. <laughs> 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 you know what they say, lucky in cards, unlucky in love. Isn't that right, Martha? Yes. <laughs> Pick up your card. I bid, eh? I bid one club. Two diamonds. Two spades. Martha? Yes? You pass? Yes. He passes. He passes. Let me see. I, I bid three clubs. Uh, you bid, Sam. Uh, say, could I have the bids again? Oh, oh, no. I opened with a club. I bid two diamonds. I bid two spades. Martha passed. Yes. I went to three clubs. It's up to you. Up to me, eh? Three clubs. Say, speaking of clubs, did I ever tell you how I met Martha? <laughs> well, sir, there was an elf dance. Oh, please. We're playing cards. It's your bid. Your south. South bid. I am the suit. Well, I'll bid three diamonds your all. Yeah. Oh, let's go, Lily. Uh, uh, three spades. And Martha? Yes. Uh, does that mean you pass? Yes. Now she's mad. It's up to me, huh? And then I bid four clubs. Uh, your bid, Sam. Meet me in St. Louis, Louis. Meet me at... Oh, Sam. Did you say something? It's your bid. Oh, well, I guess I wasn't paying any attention. <laughs> What's the bid? It's up to four clubs. Five diamonds. Pass. Martha? Yes. I double. Redouble. Whatever that means. <laughs> Come on, let's play. Martha's dummy, eh? Yes. <laughs> doubled and redoubled. Now, no, is that? I lead. Martha, put out your card. We're going to play bridge. Let's play. You go, Sam. How many cards have you got? Thirteen. We all have thirteen. Not me. I've only got twelve. Mixed deal. Yeah. No. <laughs> 
Oh. There's a card under the table. Oh, Mick Steele. Oh, playing bridge with the Harrisons. I must be out of my head. Yes. <laughs> All right, I'll deal over. I have time for just one hand. I'm going to bed. Well, anyway, to make a short story long, I said to this policeman... Sam, it's your bed. Oh, so it is. <laughs> My mind was miles away. I wish you were with it. <laughs> Lily, it's midnight. We're still bidding on the first game. There were three mixed deals. Twice Agnes got mustard on the card. Once the table collapsed. Three times Martha had to cross the hall to see if that babysitter got into the liquor. Did she, Martha? Yeah. <laughs> your bid. It is, isn't it? Uh, would you kindly review the bidding? I opened with the spade, which reminded you of a story about two old maids. You bid two clubs, which reminded you of a story about a club you belong to. Lily bid uh, two diamonds, which reminded you about a baseball story. Martha passed, which reminded you about a story about Martha. We all blush. <laughs> I did seven spades. That's a grand slam. Now it's up to you. Grand slam. Say, that reminds me of a story. <laughs> I got a friend. I don't believe it. <laughs> I just bid a grand slam and I'm going to play it. A grand slam? You won't make it. I lead a jack. Oh, I won't. Eh? Lay out your cards. A little bit. I trump the jack. My trick. I play the king of trump. Queen of Trump, Jack of Trump, Ace, King, Queen of Diamonds, Ace, King, Queen of Trump, the Ace, King of Hearts, and the last trick, the Ace of Spades, Grand Slam. Oh, Edwin. Wait a minute. What is it? The game's over. I have three cards left. <laughs> three cards left? What do you know? There's six cards on the floor. Mixed deal. Yeah. <laughs> on the floor. Oh, there's only one way for us to play, under the table. <laughs> now, Edwin, just one hand. Lily, look at the time. I've got to get some sleep. Say, it is late. I must say you folks keep us up till all hours. Uh, let's go, Martha. Well, it was nice having you over. Oh, wonderful. Oh, yes, wonderful. I'll, I'll walk you to the door. Uh, good night. Good night. Certainly enjoyed the game. Good night. You got everything, Martha? Yes. <laughs> You know, she's always forgetting something. Reminds me, I ever tell you about the time she left her purse at the Paramount Theater? Uh, Sam, I am out on my feet uh, some of the time. This will only take a moment. When we wanted to go back, they wanted us to buy tickets. Sam. Well, I explained to the manager, he was decent enough, tall fellow with white hair, I forget his name, he gave me his card. Sam. Well, anyway, he called the head usher. Bright kid, he had red hair. Do you know they train those ushers six months before they let them lay a hand on a flashlight? <laughs> well, I think it was lucky someone turned in the purse. Shows there's one honest man left in the world. <laughs> Sam. They asked Martha to identify the contents of the purse. Sam. But it was a good thing Martha remembered what was in it. She just bought two pounds of liver for dinner. <laughs> that was that. Well, good night. Good night. Good night. They're gone. Lily, help me to bed. I'll turn out the light. Oh, no! It's us again. <laughs> Martha forgot her purse. Mind if we look around? Sam! Well, it isn't under the card table. No, it doesn't seem to be. Oh, wait a minute. Say, Martha. Yes? When you were at the Paramount this afternoon... Yes? Did you forget your purse there? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry to have bothered you. Where's the door? Yeah, let's go, Martha. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Say, uh, uh, Sam. I almost forgot. My company has come up with a most amazing life insurance policy. Sam. Go home. Now, I happen to have an application right here. Um. It won't be We'll be back with the magnificent Montague in just a moment. 
And now, back to the magnificent Montague. So ends another episode of Uncle Goodhart. And until he meets you again tomorrow in his little cottage on the sunny side of the lane, here is Uncle Goodhart with his thought for the day. When your neighbor's car slips off the jack and pins him under the wheel, <laughs> kneel down and soothe him with a song in my merry Oldsmobile. <laughs> Oh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> well, as I always say, early to bed, early to rise. Keeps a man healthy, wealthy, and out of the nightclubs. <laughs> oh, spring up, please. Remember, a man of your age can't go hooting around, burning the candle at both ends. <laughs> you could use a little shut eye. You could use a little shut mouth. <laughs> <laughs> shut mouth, that's rich, yeah. Yeah, but you do look a little peaked, Mr. Montague. I know, Gad. I feel lower than a burlesque patron's thoughts. <laughs> well, all you need is... Oh, here's our director, Mr. Zinza. Hi, folks. Why, Mr. Zinza, Mr. Montague's a wreck. Just look at him. Oh, heavens, did you get the license number? <laughs> I'm just tired. I was up to four this morning. <laughs> blonde or brunette? <laughs> Why a blonde or brunette? The very idea. It's a good idea. <laughs> I must say, Zinda, you're particularly obnoxious today. Oh, have you noticed it too? <laughs> Zinda, stop annoying Mr. Montague. Can't you see he's pooped out? <laughs> Who says I'm pooped out? Did somebody say you were pooped out? I didn't say you were pooped out. Zinza, did you say he was pooped out? I didn't say he was pooped out. Who said he was pooped out? Oh, I didn't quiet. Know. Quiet. They're off and running at Bellevue. Now you two, be quiet, both of you. You're sure on edge, Mr. Montague. You're ready for your summer vacation. All I need is a night's sleep. I bed at four. Two minutes after four, the garbage trucks arrived. The merry collectors began throwing cans at each other. When they got through, another truck backed up and delivered ten tons of coal. Ten tons of coal? Believe me, I counted every piece. <laughs> My wife Lily is right. I've just got to get out of the city. Springer, where do you go for the summer? Well, my wife and I love to go camping. Oh, no, I can see Lily at a, at a, at a camping. Trip. Well, my wife and I love it. It's great. Up before sunrise, chopping wood for the fire, getting the fire going... Grab the fishing rod, wade out up to the hips in that icy stream, catching fish, bringing them back to camp, cleaning them out, putting them on the fire, getting the coffee going. And then she comes into the tent and wakes me for breakfast. <laughs> I tell you, a few weeks of that, and I'm ready to go to work. Mm. And she's ready for a sanitarium. Where do you go for the summer, Zinza? Oh, I got a little cottage on Lake Ramcon Camachi. Ron Khan Kamachi. That's an Indian name. No, it's named after a farmer around there. Sam Ron Khan Kamachi. <laughs> That's his name? Yeah. He's got the longest mailbox in the county. <laughs> ah, Zinza, I admire you. You've been able to save up for your own home in the Bronx and your own summer cottage. I suppose you can't wait to get out there this summer. Oh, we can't leave the city this summer. My wife can't be too far from the hospital. She's expecting. <laughs> Zinza, not again. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, this, this will be your tent. It's ridiculous, isn't it? My wife likes the pitter-patter of tiny feet. Ten children. Yeah. Just when one pitter-patter peters out, another pitter-patter patters out. <laughs> and you won't be able to get out to your cottage this summer. And you say it's quiet out there? When my family isn't there, it is, yeah. yes. Uh, Zinza, why don't you let me rent your cottage for the summer? There's always a lot of cottages out there for rent. 
When the news leaks out that my family isn't coming up this year, they'll all be snapped up. <laughs> it's quiet, peaceful. Zinza, it's a deal. Well, when can I see the cottage? Say, I could drive you up there in my Chevy this afternoon. You can even spend the night there. The night. A good night's sleep in the country. Didn't that I love you? I love you too, Mr. <laughs> I'll call Louie. I'll have a pack of overnight bag and we'll be off. On this highway, riding into the sun. And live? Yes. Thank you, Edwin, it's wonderful getting out of New York. Oh, don't talk, Lily. Just let me soak in that fresh air. Look, for the last time, you're going to close that car window. What's the matter, Agnes? Can't you stand a little breeze? I don't mind the breeze, but that beauty of yours is whipping me to death. <laughs> oh, we had to take her along. I haven't got enough babbling brooks in the country. Zinza? Yes, Mr. Mario. You said the place was only an hour away. We've been driving an hour and a half already. Well, don't worry about me. I could drive this highway 18 with my eyes closed. Well, open them up. For the last half hour, you've been on Highway 6. (laughs) 6? Well, what do you know? Well, I know we're on the wrong road. Didn't I told you to get a map? No, I don't need a map. Let me think. There's a, there's a filling station. Uh, pull up and let's ask for the direction. Okay, I sure hate to bother people. Excuse me, attendant. Welcome to Stanley. Stop over. What'll it be, Dad? Uh, could you tell us... Need any gas, oil, grease, tune up your motor, coal pop, fan belt, cigarettes, ride to sell, vitamin pills, jerk beef, blue jay corn plasters... <laughs> Key to the powder room, heated cabin. No, no, I. All I want are some directions. It figured. <laughs> How do we get to uh, um... Lake Ronkonkomachi? Let me see, Lake Ronkonkomachi. Well, you go back about ten miles, turn left at the papaya juice stand, keep going till you hit a dirt road that says no trespassing. <laughs> Laugh at it, <laughs> and take that road till you hit the lake. Thank you. Now let's go, Zinza. You sure you don't want any gas? No, thanks. Hurry, Zinza. Edwin, we've been driving around for hours. Lily, just be quiet. Look, I I think we're finally getting someplace. Goody, I've always wanted to see Canada. That's enough out of you, Agnes. Edwin, we've had enough bickering. The man said a papaya do stand. You'd think that four adults could remember directions. Edwin, it's getting dark. Edwin, it's getting dark. Edwin, it's getting dark. I know it's getting dark. Didn't I told you to get a map? Didn't map. you get a map? Didn't you get a map? That's all I've heard for six hours. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> Let's not fight among ourselves. Wait, wait. There's a filling station. Let's find out where we are. Okay. Uh, and pardon me. Welcome to Stanley's stopover. What'll it be, Dad? Make your ass oil green. Oh, no. Return of Monte Cristo. All right. We followed your directions. We've been driving around for six hours. And you still don't need any gas? No. <laughs> or is that car run on seltzer? All I want is information. Why don't you take some air? That's free, too. Please, please. We've got to get to Lake Ron Konkomachi. It's dark. Okay, let me see. Now, you turn left, go down about 30 miles. Give me the road, the white winding highway. This is India. Where's the lake? I'll get the cottage open. Oh, Edwin, wake up. Uh, well, uh, well, what happened? Edwin, we're here. Lake Ron Conkomac. I don't believe it. Four in the morning. Lily, get me into bed. Agnes. Agnes, wake up. Look. Look how sweet she looks. Oh, don't wake her up, Lily. Let her sleep in the car. We'll just roll the car down into the lake. (laughs) You roll who down into the lake? She's up. Let's get into the cottage. Oh, that air. We're next to nature. Smells more like we're next to a riding academy. (laughs) Welcome to Zinzer's Nest. (laughs) Want me to show you around? Uh, My bedroom. Where's my bedroom? Right right through there. 
Why, well, Edwin, you're tearing your clothes off. Hurry up, Lily, hurry. I'll listen to that choir. Now the bed. Ah, uh, this is what I need. You ready, Edwin? I'm turning out the light. Good. <sighs> Good night, Edwin. Good night, Lily. Ah. Uh... What's that? Lily, lock the door. Whoa! Oh, Edwin, that's just a little cricket. A little cricket yelling like that? Oh, they don't yell. They make that noise rubbing their legs together. I go to sleep. Good night, dear. Good night. Cricket. What a loud noise they get rubbing their legs together. <laughs> That one must be wearing corduroy pants. <laughs> oh, Edwin, go to sleep. All right. Uh... <coughs> Lily. Wait, but that's just a bullfrog. Oh, uh, good night. Uh... <coughs> oh, Cricket. Just an owl. Come out from under the bed. Lily, Lily Zinza tricked us. He brought us to the Bronx Zoo. <laughs> That's just country nightlife. I'll get used to it. Good night. Lily! <laughs> 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 Well, this is impossible. You can stay in bed. Oh, where's the window? Here. here. Shut up! That's better. My bed. Oh. Fire. Peace. Good night, Lillian. Good night, Eddie. Uh... Tell me that's a bird. <laughs> it's the people in the next cottage. Oh, look, they're moving in. I'll stop that. I'll stop it. Hey, out there. Can't you wait till morning? Edwin, why did you... Look, they're coming over. You got the man. Oh, no, four in the morning, and I'm in an argument with neighbors. They're coming to the window. All right. All right, all right. I'll open the window. How do you do, Mr. Montague? I thought I recognized your voice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Harrison. Yes, sir. We're just moving in for the summer, aren't we, Martha? Yes. Oh, no. Edwin, come back into the house. Where are you running in your pajamas? Back to New York. Back to New York. <laughs> Join us again next week at the same time for another transcribed visit with the magnificent Montague. Transcribed. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. KF. I, Los Angeles. Memo from stationers, students, architects, and professional draftsmen select supplies from stationers' complete stock, including drawing sets, T-squares, triangles, scales, or slide rules. For students, drawing set from just $2.25. Stationers Corporation, 525 South Spring. Also, San Diego.